Hi everyone, it's Michael Citron with the Citron Group at Remax Park Creek. Here for another edition of Ask Michael Monday. It's episode 75, so we're at our 75th episode. And when I go out in the world and talk to people, question they always ask when we're helping them sell a house is, what's, what's our fees? What does it cost to sell a home? There's a lot of information out there. I think a lot of people don't know exactly what their fees are. And I like to be all forthcoming and, and be able to answer the questions and really educate a client on what their fees are when they're selling a home. So I put this net sheet together. We have a really nice form. I have it off camera here that I provide. They sign it, you know, so, it, so I, I go over it with them so they know that we've, you know, you know given them all their options when they're selling their house. So let's look at a, a kind of a, a sample. This is a sample price on a house. Contract sales price would be $700,000. So the mortgage balance. And I ask a seller, what did they owe on their mortgage? And you have a first and second on this particular example, but some, some uh, people could have three mortgages or equity lines. So whatever all those numbers add up to, you pay off those fees at closing. You pay the, you pay the fees that you're paying the real estate agents, the title companies, et cetera, as well as the fees to pay off your mortgage. So in this prime example, we have $300,000 on a first mortgage and $50,000 on a second mortgage. So that totals the $350,000. Those are based on just the mortgage information. Estimated closing costs. You have closing costs, and, and what do they entail? So attorney and doc prep, uh, you're gonna hire a real estate attorney or, or a title company to prepare your documents to sign. Go over it with you, ask any questions and concerns, and understand you're not, when you hire an attorney, another fallacy is you're gonna pay an hourly fee. Attorneys in real estate, title attorneys, don't charge an hour, hourly fee. They charge a set fee to represent you which should be anywhere between $500 and $750, unless there's specific you know, uh, details that are you know, you know, more than a common closing. The abstract, now abstract is to search for the uh, city lien search and the county lien search. So understand when you sell your house, you, you need to provide marketable title to the buyer. So the next day they can sell the property or refinance it, which a lot of people do after they close on a property sometimes. So the abstract is the, the two aspects of the county and the city. So those fees are in place. So the state docs, and this, and this is different for different counties, but in Broward County, which, which we're you know, using this example for, it's 0 .007 times the sales price. So we have a $700,000 sales price. We times that by 0 .007 and we get $4,900. So you're paying Uncle Sam $4,900 um, on the uh, you know off your proceeds to sell your house, so commission, commission on a property. How I explain it is an example here. We have a six percent commission. It's a standard commission, but we're not getting six percent commission. I tell that to, to sellers, and I think it's a fallacy out there. I think people don't understand it. We co-broker it. Seller pays the commission to the selling agent and the listing agent. So the listing and selling agent split the commission in it. A typical situation. So if it's 3% goes to the broker, so the broker is the only one that can get paid on a transaction. So if a broker is the, the person in charge of the brokerage, they're getting their, their commission, their split. And then the agent who sold the house, the listing agent, gets their cut. So there's two people on that side, and then there's a selling agent, the person who brought the buyer, that the seller's paying that co-brokerage commission to. And that could be another idea of a listing, a selling broker and a selling agent. So there's four people involved, four entities in real estate to sell your house. It could be more if there's a team or you know, there's a, you know, multiple brokerages. But in this example, so you understand you're not paying 6% to make, you're not paying 6% to the listing agent. If that's the case, then you know, that's, that's great. But typically it's a co-brokerage situation. So these total to, to uh, uh, then we have 21,000 and $21,000. Then the HOA estoppel fee. Again, you have to provide marketable title. It's the city, the county, the city, and the homeowners association. If there's not a homeowners association, that fee doesn't apply. So it's typically around 200 to 300, maybe 350 dollars. If there's multiple associations, sometimes there's two, like in Heron Bay and other areas, you you might uh, have to pay a little bit higher fee. Miscellaneous, maybe the wiring money, or maybe. Um, you know, uh, stock storage, sometimes I see that the, the title companies charge. I always add that just to have a little room. I always like to give a conservative estimate, giving the highest amount instead of obviously the lowest amount because I want a client to get to closing and, and net more money than even what I'm estimating. 
It's always better that they're, you know, the net is higher than what I'm estimating. So we have the HOA, the estoppel, and then property taxes. Let's briefly get in there because I had Marty Gare. He did an amazing presentation with us and gave some really good insight. But understand, you pay property taxes in arrears. Now, you also have the right when you buy a house to pay your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance within your mortgage. So for this example, I wanted you to know what your taxes would be. So the, the estimated taxes on this property was $15,000 per year. So I said a June 30th closing date. So that's six months of the year. We pay taxes in arrears. So the seller's obligated to give a credit to the buyer at closing for the portion of taxes that they lived in the house for that calendar year. And they base it on the last year's taxes. So from January to June 30th, that would be half of the $15,000. We use this number just to give you a, a very a good estimate. So that was $7,500. So the buyer will receive that as a credit to at closing costs. They will get the tax bill from the county in November to pay for the full year. So they'll technically have the rest of the year $7,500, for example, hypothetically. And then the $7,500, they already got the credit. So they'll pay the full bill at the end of the year. I get people calling me up, why do I have this huge bill? Well, you got a credit at closing for the taxes uh, for the portion that you didn't live in the house. So the total estimated costs are 56,000 for all of these fees, including commission. And I included the property taxes. Some people tell us we shouldn't because the property taxes could be different. You might owe more money or maybe you didn't pay your taxes on time. So obviously I wanted to give you this because it's definitely, I, I go over with sellers because I want them to know. I don't want them to get a surprise that they don't realize they have to pay taxes at closing because they're so used to paying it at the end of the year or it comes out of their mortgage. So these two fees for the first and second mortgage, $350,000, the $56,000 for all of these fees comes out to being $406,000. Pay off your mortgage, pay the title, pay the commission, everything all in. So then we take the sales price of $700,000 and we minus $406,000 and we get a net to the seller of $294,000. And again, I get my clients to sign this. I want them to know this. I want them to f understand when they get their estimates from the title companies that they can pull this sheet out as a friendly reminder of what their fee should be. And the attorney we work with, or ourselves, our team, Brooke, you know, Jorge, myself, we're always looking at this to make sure that our clients aren't being overcharged and, and understand that the fees are on the sheets appropriately. So if all else fails, and somebody asks me, Michael, what are your fees? And I don't have the, the opportunity to write all this down. And they quickly ask me, even in this example, besides the taxes, take the taxes out and commissions, you're paying about 1%. And that big number is about your doc stamps. So understand you're paying the largest chunk of money um, at closing besides commission and your mortgage payoff. Of course, that's the largest. If you don't have a mortgage, then it's this. It's, it's, it's that fee of $4,900. So I say about 1% because all of these fees besides the 7,500 add up to a, you know, about you know, $7,000. So that's about what your fees are. So if your commission's 5%, you can tell somebody your fees are gonna be 6%. If your fees are 6%, you can say seven. So 7% 7 of that is the $49,000. 56 minus 7,500, you can understand it's right around that 1%. So these are things that your agent should be going over. You should be all knowing what your fees are before you sell your house. I tell I give the 7% just to you know, give them an idea before we get to the house. But if you want to know this, this is what your agent should be doing. And an agent should be able to answer these questions very quickly. We get these questions often. And I think this is a very valuable education for clients who don't realize it because they get to closing. And if their number and they're expecting 350 on this deal and they're only netting 294, who are they going to cry to? Who are they going to be upset with? Me, the agent, because the agent should explain this. So this is also for the, you know, for our clients or potential sellers, people that are, are looking to make a move. This is what your fees could be based on a 700 price. Or you can certainly use this information to help you calculate your own price of your home and the estimated uh, sales price. But the idea is at the end of the day, what are you netting? And what information are you getting? And that's coming from an expert like myself who can give you this information and make you informed on the market. So as we get into the selling season, you want to know what your house is going to sell for. Give us a call. I'd be happy to go over what your numbers could be based on a potential selling price. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, I sometimes give that, what we're going to list the house for, and then ultimately what it could sell for. 
Anything extra is certainly gravy, and they understand that. So when you're looking to make a move this, this uh, you know, we're almost into the summer selling season already, um, you know, please let us know. We'd love to be able to earn your business and trust. You can give us a call. You can go to our website for home value, My Parkland Home Value. That's myparklandhomevalue.com. And I really appreciate this. I love getting back into my educational days of being a teacher and going over these things because we do this every day for our clients and our team. So you hire our team. They all know how to do this. We have classes in-house just to go over how to go over next sheet. And I think it's important. It's your largest financial asset. Look what this guy's netting on this house. $294,000. Don't you think that seller should know what they're getting into before they list the property? So I look forward to earning your business and trust, I said again. Um, I hope everybody has a great evening. Like, share this, comment. If you have any questions, you want me to do a net sheet on your house, please. It, it's very easy to do. Next week, we are not going to have an Ask Michael Monday because it's going to be Memorial Day. We're actually um, you know, not having a, a working day for, for Ask Michael Monday, but we will be back the following week for our 76th episode of Ask Michael Monday. Hope you guys found this in informative, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening with your family. Take care, and have a nice evening.